Hello and welcome to the Smart Women in Business blog and podcast. I'm your host, Jay Mackay from Jay Mackay Communications, marketing consultant and coach who works with people across the world to build the business of their dreams. Today, I'm speaking with my online friend, Claire Riley. Yay! Hi! Claire is a professional Virgo, neat freak, organizer extraordinaire, planning queen, opposite of me, a complete business nerd who's obsessed with simplifying streamlining and systemizing things so you can focus more on your zone of genius claire is (laughs) claire is a content marketing strategist social media whisperer and process driven problem solver who also loves red wine for kids mountain dawdling and spending way too much time watching reels welcome claire (laughs) Hi, thanks for having me. It's good to finally connect. It's taken it is, a little while to get here. It has. Like we have many chats on Instagram, but um, <laughs> not many live face-to-face. So it's very exciting to have you here. Sure is. I've known you for a while online. So tell me about your business journey and how you got to where you are right now. Sure. I've actually just celebrated my sixth business anniversary in this Ooh. business, which is pretty exciting. Um, uh, I started, um, a bit of a long story, I guess I started when my kids were babies, my ex-husband or my husband at the time was doing FIFO. So, you know, I was kind of there by myself for quite a bit and working in the corporate world just wasn't, just wasn't quite working and it wasn't really what I wanted to, you know, to be focusing on and all that sort of thing. So, um, had some really great conversations with people who I trust and who also had their business and, Um, who became amazing mentors and kind of, you know, got over that whole, you've got to have $50,000 in the bank and a 500 page business plan to start your business and just kind of started and did the whole lean startup thing and, um, you know, started making money really quickly and was like, oh, this is fantastic. And what I get to choose my own hours as well. And, and who I work with, like, what, what, what's that all about? Um, So look, there was definitely some ups and downs over the last six years, but the last two years in particular have been um, really about, I guess, um, you know, working out exactly what does work and how I want to work and who I want to work with and all of that sort of thing. So there's been a few different iterations and there's been lots of mistakes and it's been lots of fun. It's been lots of tears. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> been an up and down sort of thing. Um, but it's a really beautiful place um, that, I'm, that I'm in at the moment with, you know, a few different sort of things going on and the variation between who I work with and all that sort of thing has just been, yeah, it's really awesome. It's really cool. It's a it's a fun fun old journey when you when you look back and go wow I've actually done this like yeah. built this thing from nothing and I love lean startup yeah it's such a good concept and yes. and a way to get going you don't need to have everything mapped out you just yeah. need some way to someone to find you and some way for someone to pay you pay you exactly <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, it's pretty awesome when you see how much you can start making money before you even spend it. And I'd set up businesses before I was a remedial massage therapist and a baby massage trainer and a had like a CV and um, a job, uh, like job application, job interview, coaching business for a little while. And they were all fine, but I definitely pumped a lot of my you know money into those to get them kind of off the ground and only to find that they weren't quite the right fit or what I was looking for anyway. So it was kind of a new concept to go let's just throw some spaghetti at the wall and actually tap into my gifts and the things that I'm naturally good at. And, uh, you know, all the mindset stuff that comes with asking for money, that the stuff that's really easy to you, but that's a whole other conversation. You know? <laughs> oh, we have talked a lot about that on this podcast. And oh, good. Money mindset is one of the, and mindset itself is one of the biggest barriers, I think. Oh, absolutely. In business yeah. and at every stage of business. Because I, I don't generally work with startups anymore. I used to a lot. And now it's still, oh, you know, imposter syndrome and all of that. But we'll come to that. We'll come to that. So tell yeah. me about your evolution. What were, the, what were the signs it was time to change? Because often mm. our businesses don't look anything like they were six years ago or 12 years sure. ago in my yeah. case. Yeah. So I guess um, one of the big things that, um, well, there's probably three things. One of them is your products. One of them is the income, um, and the other one is your time. So I guess if I've sort of separated into the three things that have always motivated me to make some changes or, you know, the next iteration or the next evolution of my business has been one of those three things. So probably the first one was price. When I first started, I did this special for much 
to my coach's chagrin, absolutely. Like, don't tell her that I'm putting this offer out there. I did $25 for an hour, um, which was, you know, a tenth of what, what my hourly rate is now. But I'm such a fan of it, to be honest. And I tell anyone, if that's what helps you put yourself out there for the first time, go nuts. Like, it was such a kind of a baptism of fire. Like, I got eight people straight up, straight off the bat. So I had eight new clients within the first week or like the first day that I put it out there and I worked with them all in the first couple of weeks. I, it took the pressure off me because I didn't feel like I had to provide $250 worth of value. All I had to do was like make them feel like they got their 25 bucks worth. And I feel like, you know, that's not, that's not a big ask sort of thing. But it also gave me eight times to practice my craft, to practice the process, to practice the delivery and to just kind of get over myself and that sort of thing. So in that sense, it was really good. But obviously that's not sustainable, like charge $25 an hour. You're going to end up working a lot of hours to pay the bills, right? Yeah, you're going to cap out pretty soon. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that was the first kind of thing like put that up to I think 45 and then very quickly up to 75 and then up to 150 and then you know so on and so forth and that sort of thing. So that was kind of um one of those big things I think that forces the evolution of you know how you're doing things but also what you're charging $25 for may be slightly different to what you're charging $250 for. So it also forces you to get really niche or really specific on what the outcomes are or really clear on the value proposition of what you're actually selling and that sort of thing. So I think they're kind of, you know, it's a bit of a, which comes first, the chicken or the egg sort of thing. Um, the second thing was around, uh, I remember doing a session um, with a customer journey specialist on a few other things, including the customer journey, but she said about halfway through our session, Claire, what, what do you want to be doing in your business? Like, what are the three things that you want to be spending most of your time doing? And I, you know, thought for a second and whatever the three things were, wrote them on sticky notes and put them up on the wall. And then she said, and what are the three things that are currently taking the most of your time or attention or energy or whatever? And there was no match, right? The things that I was spending most time on were the things that I hated or that felt really, really hard or really unfun sort of thing. But I, you know, and so just, just seeing that, and I, now the top thing that I ask all of my clients, like, what are the three things that you want to spend most of your time doing? Adjust accordingly, right? And that was a really big eye opener for me just to go, like I'm the boss, I make the rules and I'm still doing work that I hate. Like I'm, that's um, not, that totally defeats the purpose. Like I'm, it's not a job anymore. I can outsource or I can automate it or I can stop doing it all together or whatever the answer is, you know? So that was a really big thing around the process, but that also then kind of informs your product. So at another point in the evolution, there was definitely um, a time I did like a stock take, all of my freebies, all of my paid offers, all of my acuity appointment types that people could book with me. And there were literally like probably over 50 things. What am I doing? This is so confusing. It's confusing to me. very confused. Yeah. It's very confusing to me. It must be so confusing to other people. So actually go to getting clear on what were the things that I liked to deliver and what were the profitable things. So all of those sort of things, you know, sometimes you take a hit on one because you just love doing it so much. And sometimes, you know, you hand the other things up because that's where, you know, the money makers are and that sort of thing, but finding a nice happy balance and just having a couple of those kind of baskets made a big difference. So I reckon it was probably three or four years ago that I made the decision. There were three ways. It was going to be VIP retreats and Batchit Crazy, which is my online membership. Which is the best and name for a product ever. Thank you. <laughs> I just slow it down just in case anyone hasn't heard of it. It's Batch It Crazy. I'm not just swearing. Promise. Batching content. <laughs> All about batching content, yes. <laughs> um, but as soon as I made that decision and cleared out so much of the other noise Clutter, and the junk yeah. and that sort of thing, a lot of those things then became like bonuses and add-ons and downloads and templates, but I wasn't charging for them anymore because they weren't as valuable as those three things. Um, but everything got a lot easier from there because the content that surrounded those three things were very specific. The launch period that surrounded those three things were very specific. You know, all of those sort of things just became so much easier. Um, and also it made, I guess, my audience and my potential clients be like, oh, she's the one who does the A, B and C. Yeah. There's three ways. There's not like, oh my gosh, there's a menu here the size of something that Gordon Ramsay would be freaking out over. It's just three things, mm -hmm. you know, and often it's the same people who come from one and then go into the other or, you know, vice versa and that sort of thing. So I guess they've kind of been some of the milestones that have preempted those evolutionary kind of next steps or iterations of the business. That makes, does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. And, and mentally you've got to be there. Mindset, yeah. you've got to be there. Because you can't just create products and set pricing if you're not ready for it. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I always say, um, you know, you trust the process, but you can't just trust anyone who says trust the process. You've got to go through the process and stuff a heap of stuff up first. Um, You've got to break some things. You've got to make a heap of mistakes. You've got to, you know, have those moments where you're like, what the hell just happened? What have I done? What am I doing? Yeah. And then you see, okay, I'm in this part of the process because then five minutes later, you're back up here in the process and then you go back down in the process and then you're back up in the process. And it's not until you've done that a few times, like, ah. That's what everyone means by trusting the process, but you can't trust it until you've done the process a bit. So I'm like, trust the process. It's just a nice hashtag, but just do the process and you'll you figure just it go out. Through, just keep, just <laughs> keep making progress. And that yeah. is the actual process. Exactly. And then you come out the other end and go, oh, ah, oh, that's what just happened. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There was courses that I was doing that I did, you know, even four or five times over and even by the fifth time I was doing the same content that I'd done four times, I was like, oh, it makes so much sense now, or it makes sense, or I didn't even hear it the other four times because it wasn't what I needed to hear at that point, or it didn't, it wasn't relevant, or it didn't make sense, or I just hadn't, I didn't have the experience to go, oh, I can apply that to my business or whatever, Mm. that sort of thing. Mm. So I think it is definitely a progress thing. And it's, it's um, almost sort of cherry picking, you know, the low hanging fruit of what, works for you at the moment or what you need at the moment or all of that sort of thing and sort of stitching it together I like I always talk about you know businesses especially with um startup and even you know through the journey even my business I think it's still a bit of a Frankenstein business and I'm a total Mm. tight ass I hate paying for things so I do often have like a little bit of that free tool and a little bit of that over there and I stitch it together and I make it work somehow and you know um and I kind of like that like it had doesn't didn't have to be all the bells and whistles and Mm. everything in a row before I was like hey I've got a business I'm like no let's just start with the Facebook page and see a mail chimp and yeah exactly strap it like it's 1999 yeah (laughs) yeah I'm totally totally up for it (laughs) yeah me too and then you go you have a little dabble in products and then you go okay that one's the one that one's the one yeah exactly you you got to play with them and as you say you got to break stuff so how do you manage your life as an entrepreneur because I know you have little ones yes and we we're just talking about the chaos earlier. Yes, we were okay. talking about the chaos. Um, I guess there's a lot of different things. And I think probably the biggest thing that I've learned is that there's no one size fits all. And what works for me today or this week or this month or this year isn't going to work for me tomorrow or next week and so on and so forth, you know. And giving myself the permission to be less rigid still have you know some structure and that sort of thing because we all know I'm a typical Virgo and I do love my structure but I've got safety nets right Um, and those are the safety nets that allow me to be more flexible and allow me to play and allow me to be more responsive and you know with you you know best laid plans of mice and men and then you could get sick and it all goes out the window or you forget that there was some event on at school and all your plans go out the window and that sort of thing and I think part of it is Um, being really selective about your messaging and who you work with as well like I remember especially back when I was still quite new and um, there was a couple of times this happened but one specific example where I'd spoken to a woman she was super keen to do some work with me and then she was she's like yep send me the invoice then the invoice and she'd message say I'm really sorry I'm actually I can't commit I was like cool no worries let me know when you are and then she kept coming back like two or three times and eventually she was like I'm just I'm actually just really worried because she had a little baby she was like he never sleeps he's you know wakes up and I'm just worried that it's going to be really disruptive to you and I was like oh mate like seriously I'll have to cancel just as often as you will my kids were only probably two and three then as well I'm like listen like I choose to work with mumpreneurs especially because we get it like I'm really selective with that and if there was someone I mean I have to cancel things sometimes as you've seen I think we've had to reschedule this like three times (laughs) I Um, think it was your kid and then my kid (laughs) right and but that's cool and there's no beef and if there's beef then we just don't carry on. We're not a match. I mean? We're not yeah. a match. Yeah. So I think that's a really big part of how um, I've been able to build the lifestyle around that without the guilt. And it certainly didn't happen overnight. And I was, you know, in my corporate career, I was absolutely, you know, would have been saying, I famously said all the time, like, I never get sick. And if I do get sick, you won't know about it until I'm literally dead in the office and you have to send me home. And then I'll end up in the hospital for a week because I've literally get my, let myself get it. But I took loads of pride in that. I thought like, that's what a good little employee and did you know um so that was kind of my my mo sort of thing and now it's like I was saying to someone you know last year I had a period for about six months where I was working such big hours and they're like well like how many hours were you doing I was like oh maybe like 25 or 30 and then I just felt like 
Oh my gosh. Did I just hear myself say I just worked so many hours and so many hours was 25 or 30 hours a week for maybe four or hours. five months. It is a lot of hours. And yeah. like, what a blessing that I think yeah. that 25 to 30 hours is a blessing. I used to do 60 and 80 hour weeks and like with my eyes closed, you know, no issue. And take pride in that. And like, that was a good thing, you know. So in terms of how I balance things, I guess, yeah, that's the main thing is to be quite selective with, you know, who I work with and, and my the whole ethos around my brand and my messaging and how I teach and the sort of people that I want to work with are the same. Like we have other priorities other than our business. Our business is a massive priority, of course, and we all need to pay bills. But also the whole reason that most of us started businesses is so that we could have flexibility, more time with our kids, time with our family, time to do hobbies, time to do like whatever it is that we do, not so that we could be a slave to it and feel bad every time we had to make a change or be flexible or, you know, look after our kids, all that sort of thing. Yeah. So. I think that's, you know, one of the big things. And um, I mean, in terms of the practicalities of how I make all of that work, you know, keep going back to the hashtag textbook Virgo sort of thing. But my calendar is kind of my oracle. Like I do, you know, every time when my computer opens up, the first thing that comes up is my Google calendar. Um, it's on my phone. Everything kind of runs in there. So the kid stuff, it's color coded. No, no huge surprises there. Yeah, yeah. The kid stuff's in there. The recurring meetings are in there. My um, self care stuff, like when I go to the gym or if I'm going for a walk, or you know, all of those things are all in there. Um, and one thing I, I often teach all of this sort of thing with the market and with the uh, master scheduling and that sort of thing is when when you've got a, a calendar or a planning system that works that really make helps you make decisions in your business as well right because mm. you go if I want to be going for a walk five days a week and if I want to be going to gym twice a week and if I want to be having coffee with a friend once a week and if I want to be going on a retreat once every six months and if I want to be doing a mosaic table class once a week whatever it is it's all in the calendar and I need to talk to my business mentor once a week and I'm doing this course and we have live calls this many times and then you start to see like your windows of actual time for delivery and for income generating things really shrinking. Mm -hmm. It helps you to get pretty damn clear on A, what you need to be offering and B, how much you need to be charging, yeah. right? So when you go, oh, I want to make $10,000 a month and then you look at your calendar and you're like, but I've only got five hours a week right, how am I going to do this sort of thing? Rather than going, I'm going to make $10,000 a month and then get to the end of the month and go, I haven't even started that thing. I didn't even make any money. What, what happened there? It's often because we haven't actually worked out the time for money exchange and ratio or the you know leverage products and all of that sort of thing. So I sort of think having your calendar and having your priorities in your calendar and that sort of thing really actually helps you make those decisions. Mm. And when you look at that and you're like, well, it makes it a no-brainer. I've got to put my brakes up now. Or it makes it a no-brainer that I need a leveraged um, or a, like a leveraged um, product so it's not just one-on-one -on -one or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. and you t it's it's interesting. My calendar is my brain because it yeah. saves me remembering anything. Totally, yeah. And if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. It doesn't get done. Same. No. <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah. Because it just, it's not real unless it's in the yeah. calendar. But <laughs> you touched on the guilt there and it's often a balance for us who are managing our kids and managing the clients the guilt mm. is a really difficult thing to to get over yeah but when you're working with the right type of clients and I mean my kids have grown up in this they have no option but yeah. they're used to it um that's a hard thing to let go of especially mm. if you've come from corporate you're used to that really high level of delivery like I hate the feeling of letting people down yeah yeah and it's just, yeah. it's one of the big challenges, I reckon. It is, it is, it is a big challenge. And I think um, it sort of comes back to that being flexible. Sometimes your children are, I mean, always your children are a priority, but sometimes you're happy to let them watch the iPad for a couple of hours while you're on calls or doing work. And mm. it's sometimes you, you're like, no, my kids are the, you know, I need, they need my time and attention and that sort of thing. And there's no, um, there's no point beating yourself up either way sort of thing um mm. but yeah the guilt the guilt thing is always <laughs> always oh, a bit of an fair. issue it's always it's always something to work through it's I fair. guess one thing that I, I think especially working mostly with women um and you've probably experienced this as well is that when one of us sort of says look I'm not feeling guilty about this anymore I'm, I'm doing this unapologetically it kind of holds the door open for other people to go like yeah that's appealing yeah. like I don't want to feel guilty about this shit anyway and the more that we can you know be open about it and honest about it and not have that shame even if you're saying like this sucks and I'm I'm really sorry and I'm really embarrassed but at the end of the day this is my priority or my kid's sick like you you've got to surrender control over that sort of thing and yeah it really does 
kind of um, make it easier for the people around you to do it. And the more that you see that, you know, you can kind of be a good influence or a leader in that space, that you're like, oh, yeah. well, that kind of worked. Maybe I'll do it again. <laughs> you know? It's that whole thing of we're, we're people first. Yes, exactly. Human to human. And Humans. You know, that's why we're doing it. That's why we're doing it differently. And, you know, our whole marketing and, you know, that whole magnetic thing is very, very different to the push marketing that, you know, from back in the day slash oh, yes. still rife everywhere else. <laughs> it's still a bit. Oh, yeah. It's around. It's around. I have many conversations about that. So what does a great day in the office look like to you? Apart from calendar opening as soon as you turn on your <laughs> Yes, good one. Well, my day generally doesn't start until about nine. So before that, it's all kids stuff. And on the days that I don't have the kids, it's about going for a walk or gym or something like that. So, um, yeah, a bit, bit of both of those sorts of things. I generally don't do, um, my, my acuity is only open between 10 and 2. Mm -hmm. um because I like to I, I realized about myself a few years ago when I was rushing around in the morning it's not so much these days I've moved to the sunny coast my lifestyle is pretty relaxed and pretty chilled and it takes me five minutes to walk the kids to and from school whereas before it used to take me an hour and 40 kilometers to get both the kids dropped off and back home mm -hmm. and by that yeah. stage we'd been awake for three hours everything was a bit frantic I'd already spent an hour in the car it was you know all that sort of thing these days it's not so much but I do know about myself that if I have to go through that and then sit down and try and switch on, I'm not at my best. And, and I, I love and I really relish those, you know, rituals about making a nice cup of coffee and sitting down and organising my day and checking my calendar and making sure that I'm at like what I call ground zero for my inbox, my uh, messages, that sort of thing. So that everything's kind of taken care of. Um, and there's a few other, you know, morning ritual sort of things that I do. I usually pull a card, do a bit of journaling or captain's orders and that sort of thing sometimes do a meditation and then I hit the ground running at 10 o'clock and I'm so happy to go do whatever I need to do for you know the next two four four or four and a half hours whatever um so there's always that beautiful kind of space whether these days I might go to the beach or I might just come home I might do the coffee I might sit down and write my to-do list for the day or whatever so there's always that element of that kind of morning ritual that just makes such a massive difference mindset wise um, and then productivity wise for the rest of the day so that's kind of not negotiable for me occasionally I'll take an earlier meeting but it's got to be like the last resort kind of thing. <laughs> um, and sacred then, time sacred. sacred time so and it just makes such a difference and there's you know been times where I'm like I'm feeling really overwhelmed or burnt out or unproductive or shitty or whatever what's going on and when I think about it it's because I've dropped one of my routines and yes. I've dropped my morning routine or my end of day routine usually it's the morning that goes because I'm tired or I'm cranky or I have to go and get groceries instead of coming home and doing my things, whatever it was. Like, ah, oh, that's fallen. Okay, get back into that. And it just helps. And sometimes the ritual needs to change. Sometimes I don't pull a card or don't do journaling for a couple of months because I don't feel like it. And that's cool. I'm not like, it's Rigid. on my ritual yeah. to-do list, so I have to do it. Like it's, Otherwise, it's I'm about... not showing up as a spiritual <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not about that, you know. And so I totally go through phases where I look at that journal. I'm like, I hate you so much. I'm not doing pages this way. I'm not writing anything this morning. I just want to sit and drink my coffee outside and watch the sun or the rain as it is at the moment or whatever it is. And that's fine. But having that space between the morning stuff and the getting started with work stuff is really, really important to me. So I definitely hold on to that. It brings <laughs> as me much great as I can. peace, that period of time in my day where I go, yeah. Whew, all right, meditate, reset. Yeah then go into the day and I'm um, like you I find if I've dropped that the whole rest of my life is so much more stressful yeah yeah weird. it is weird and also completely understandable so. <laughs> and also completely logical but completely <laughs> yeah but weird very very weird <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so then I guess I've got what I sort of picture like four or so, four or so hours of super productive time um I typically have you know my I've got batch of crazy calls um, once a week which is for two hours I've got other calls that I run and then other calls that I'm you know in professional development um, mastermind courses and that sort of thing um, and then client one-on-one -on -one work and then if there's time where I don't have anything plugged into my calendar I usually have something plugged into my calendar so on the spare the spare time it's like um, you know client work or CEO time or admin time or reporting time like once a once a month um, I have my barefoot date night, which ends up being my barefoot date night for my personal finances, as well as my profit first stuff and all of my reporting and finance and stuff and all of that sort of thing. So 
um, yeah, so I guess all of that kind of gets done. I go and pick up the kids usually around 2.30 and then it's usually the end of my day. <laughs> a couple of times a week they're, they're not here of an afternoon, so I um, occasionally work a little bit later, but um, I'm pretty pretty um, into my Pomodoro work sessions, the 25 oh, minutes, too. five minutes and that sort of thing. So, you know, by the time you've done a couple of sets of those, you've been so super productive that I feel like I can take the afternoon off you know we we have go this amazing beach. lifestyle we go to the beach we do whatever I want to go to the beach sunny beach. coast I yeah. keep talking about it I love it's so sunny great coast. it's so beautiful I love it so much where were you before just Brisbane not far ah, not yeah. far so yeah. not to not the craziness of Sydney where no oh I can't even no. drive in Sydney it scares yeah, me crazy. um I'm <laughs> such a country mouse now I moved from Melbourne and I drove into Melbourne last week and I'm like, oh, my God. The oh, track. wow. Yeah. But Overwhelming. Yeah. Overwhelming, <laughs> yes. And the energy. Anyway, what tools do you use? You talked about, we talked about bootstrapping earlier and you obviously yes. use Acuity. And everyone uses Love Zoom because that's how we live. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom Acuity, Asana is like the, between Asana and my calendar. I mean, if they both went away tomorrow, I would be rocking in the corner dribbling and I'd be t- a total mess. Absolutely. Um, so Asana is kind of my, you know, my second little oracle. I keep all of my to-do lists, my priorities, but also my SOPs and processes and planning things, content, all of that sort of thing stays in their databases and how I manage my team and all of that sort of thing. So Asana is absolutely just magic to me I really love it <laughs> happiness, happiness. Um, so yes I use acuity for all my like um, online bookings as well as all the confirmations and reminder emails and that sort of thing um, I switched to active campaign from um, MailChimp probably four years ago yeah, and kind of like an active campaign cult leader these days because I oh, just adore it so much yeah I love I it just love the automations it. The automations, the drag, it's just so easy and beautiful. And um, if you haven't listened to the Active Campaign podcast, also highly recommend. I don't listen to fun podcasts. I listen to ones about email marketing tools. <laughs> but it's well, very, Claire very doesn't good. have spare time. I know. I promise I'm actually really interesting and fun, but I just like listening to really <laughs> dorky things. go and lie on the beach and listen to Active Campaign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. What a dork. Anyway. Um, so I love Active Campaign. I use Squarespace. I've used Squarespace for my last three businesses and I've been with them, um, yeah, for probably, gosh, I don't know, nine, ten years cumulatively. And I just really love their functionality and how everything looks so pretty and it works with security. In fact, it owns security these days. It does. What else do I use? Messenger I use quite a bit. I use Slack with some of my clients. Um, Evernote for big, chunky things google drive is probably my go-to for organizing stuff with that sort of thing these days i'm just looking at my toolbar nice. oh, quick links quick links yes um loom loom is another one most of yeah, these are all free loom. by the way but loom i've i, I have upgraded to because i use it so much and i needed some extra storage but it's like i don't know seven dollars a month or something um so now if i'm handing something over to my team i very rarely send an email with instructions i just do a video of the instructions and then they turn it into a process what need, or yeah. whatever and that sort of thing it's just is just so brilliant um they're probably the main ones i think they're the main things that pop into my head i know it's i use a lot on the go on my phone um for some reason I, i'm not a huge fan of asana and evernote on my phone so i kind of put quick things into my inotes and then i transfer them later if need be but yeah i'm a big fan of emailing it. myself are you yeah because mm-hmm. i know if it's in my inbox and it's unread you have to it do will with get it addressed yeah <laughs> Good one. It will get done. I like it. <laughs> oh, the way we live these days. Um, uh, I do. I'm, I do talk to Siri quite a lot, and Siri takes lots of notes for me and, and sends me lots of reminders. And yeah, I've got alarms going off every five seconds. And <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really such big. a dork too. Um, one of the things that affects every entrepreneur I know is imposter syndrome. So. It can show up in many different ways, but what are your methods to overcome it and how do you respond to the bad days of of, of business? Because we don't see them on Instagram. Yeah, it's so true. It's a really good question, actually. I think um, just to address that specific point is to, is to say that absolutely everyone, no matter how people are showing up, everyone feels it. 
probably on a fairly regular basis, not just a once off. It's not just something that comes up, you know, every six months that you start to freak out or something. Um, I think um, one of the things, and I, this sounds really basic, but something that makes made a really makes, I guess, always makes a big difference. But I went through this period probably again four or five years ago where there was this period for maybe six months where I'd have an idea, almost bring it to life, then someone else would bring it out. And I'm like, what just happened? Like, I can't, I can't bring this out if like people think I'm copying someone. Right, back to the drawing board. Come up with another idea, get it 90% done, someone would come out with that. I'm like, what the hell is going on? This happened like four or five times in a row. And then um, for the last time it happened, I, I went into total meltdown. I'm like, what is going on here? I don't know if you've read Big Magic, but now that I've read Big I Magic, have, I'm like, ah, that's probably something to do with it because I wasn't you know, onto it or whatever. But um, one thing that I felt like that was a really good thing that happened out of that was that I got to the point where I was passionate about one thing that I was like, no, you know what? I still really want to bring this out. So I, it made me kind of um, innovate a little bit more. And I went back and I was like, maybe there's something I've missed. Maybe there's something that I haven't quite made mine enough. Or maybe there was something that I, um, that I was missing. And so it made the product better than it would have been because I, I, I wanted to differentiate it a little bit. So it didn't look like it was exactly the same as this other person, but it also gave me that kind of marker. Like, this is really important. This isn't just a, oh, well, someone else has done it. I won't do it anyway. So, you know, all of that sort of thing. Um, um, and moving on from that sort of thing. So actually looking at it with curiosity rather than, um, frustration which is much easier said than done obviously I'm definitely jumped to frustration <laughs> quite quickly, I feel frustrated a lot of the time oh, yes, that's exactly right exactly <laughs> um but it was a really interesting you know activity and then once I brought it out I was like oh this is fantastic you know this really worked and that sort of thing um and and I think that's the the, the biggest thing the other thing is when I was then from a consumer point of view looking at some different products and seeing like there's all these people who I could work with for this particular need, whatever it was. But what was it that was drawing me to one or the other? Like they all could have done the job. They all were, were competent. They maybe probably had similar pricing, all of that sort of thing. And realizing that for me, it was about the connection, that magnetism that we talked about briefly before, and then reflecting that back to myself. Like it's actually not that I'm better or more or more expert or cheaper or whatever it is than all these other people it's actually about that being magnetic right and it's not necessarily it's not a competition right I mean I guess it kind of is in some ways but at the end of the day if we don't see it work with someone else yeah exactly then yeah. then that's cool yeah um, and when you can get into that magnetism um it just makes so much so much more sense to me these days when I and I actually understood magnetism really well when I came up when I met someone who I'd been really drawn to online we'd communicated online quite a lot and then we met in person and I felt this physical like repulsion this physical like oh I've got to get away from you and it wasn't and I was so confused by it because in my head and in all of our other interactions I'd been so like um I don't even know if I was drawn to her, but I also had this, you know, um, you know, in the recovering perfectionist sort of thing, I also have this people pleasing. And the more that I think someone doesn't really like me, the more I like chase after them and be like, you sure, but I'm really nice. Like you should like me because of X, Y, Z, you know, and you kind of go over the top to try and make people like you, especially when they might not like you rather than just hanging out with people who think you're amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. We don't do that anymore though. Like we're over that now. We're good. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done we're not doing that anymore but it was a real thing right and so actually realizing that some people are just going to be repellent to you and some people are going to be magnetic to you and vice versa and just being okay with that and and being like oh we're just repellent to each other cool no harm no foul there's no malice there's no nastiness there's no it's not personal there's no just drama not, our, our vibes it's just, aren't just not just not our people let's move on and go and hang with some people who are our people who are mm -hmm. magnetized to us who we are magnetized to and that sort of thing so I think that was a really big shift in my mindset that probably helped me get over that imposter syndrome sort of thing. When I say get over it that time, like it's still, you know, as I said, keeps popping up and it pops up all the time for different reasons. And, you know, whether it's the, someone else has already done this or someone else does it better or all of that sort of thing, it always pops up for us. But at the end of the day, there, we are all the most unique um, combination of our experience, our qualifications, our lifestyle, our beliefs, our values, like all of these things. No one, we're the perfect melting pot. And that's what differentiate, differentiates us from anyone. So you can't actually compare 
it's comparing apples and oranges, you know. Yeah, I love it. There we go. Went around the circles a bit there, but <laughs> we got to the point. We are. I there. understand what you're talking about because it's, it's very much, oh, you know, especially if you you're doing quotes, they're not getting accepted. Whatever. I actually don't even remember the quotes that I send that don't get accepted anymore. Like yeah. back in the old days, we're like, oh, why didn't they accept it? I'm like, right, move on. Yeah. Um, because it's not about necessarily what you do, how you do it. It's about how you show up, who mm. you are how you gel as, a, you know, that energetic attraction, that magnetism and that working relationship you have mm. with people because ultimately being in business is about relationships. Yeah. And you got to be, you got to be mates with someone. Otherwise yeah. it's not fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. obviously I know you online um, and that's how I know you. Like I've never met you in person, but how do you maintain your sense of community um, while being a, entrepreneur in the wild community online do you mean or in oh, just in life. everywhere everywhere yeah I, I don't know I guess there's sort of um different circles I suppose that I that we all move in whether it's the the school parents or the neighborhood you know the physical thing the you know all of my best friends now you know live interstate or at least a long way away <laughs> that sort of thing um, I think technology and and messages and just staying in touch makes a really big difference with that and that sort of thing but I think it, it again it comes back to um, being really clear on what you stand for and and um, and and sort of putting that out there you know I did this um uh a couple of um, 10 day challenges and that sort of thing around putting your message out and doing your selfies and all of that sort of thing. And again, it all comes back to that magnetism thing. I think being okay with letting the people go who, you know, aren't your people and calling in the people who are. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned, especially in the last probably three years, gone through a lot of personal change in my personal life and that sort of thing. Um, the biggest difference I think has just been about becoming and getting okay with being vulnerable and, uh, you know, testing your, your toe in the water. And I was, as I said, very, it, you know, took a lot of pride in the fact that I never took time off work and that I was very strong. I've always been very independent. I was, uh, you know, brought up pretty much as an only child by a single mum, And I'm, you know, kind of had this whole persona of like, no, nah, I've got this. I'm a bit of an island, super independent until I realized, you know, how much of a trauma response that was and all of that sort of thing. So I've done the work and had the sessions and, you know, that's an ongoing kind of process. Um, but actually learning to be vulnerable and learning to get things wrong and learning to go oh, stuff that up, that sucks, you know, rather than being this whole perfectionist um, persona, which is, you know, its own sort of kettle of fish um, really makes um really makes a, a massive difference. So when I started talking about the Recovering Perfectionist, which is my Facebook group, my podcast, there's a book that's coming out shortly. Mm -hmm. um, when I started doing the Recovering Perfectionist stuff, it was terrifying because I'm like, I was so attached to and so used to being the perfectionist and, and everyone being like, wow, she does such a good job at this. And it was such a part of my persona sort of thing that when I finally was like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this I'm anymore. I'm exhausted. It's boring. <laughs> You know, and motherhood was the catalyst for that for me. It was just like this reality check of like, get your shit together. You do not have to do these things perfectly. You can ask for help and you can accept help when people say yes. And, and you can you know, fail. When people it's offer, fine. I mean. And you can what? Fail. You fail. And the whole world isn't going to explode. And, you know, when I first put out um, The Recovering Perfectionist, the podcast, I put it out there and it was kind of almost, there was a, there was a couple of things that I knew weren't quite ready, but I'm like, if I miss the promo day today, I have to wait for another week and it's like a day away sort of thing. So I put it out there and one of my clients first came back and said, Claire, I'm so proud of you. You've put this out there with all these spelling mistakes or something like that. And I slammed my laptop shut, burst into tears and completely lost the plot for a little while. And then I'm like, hang on a minute. This was an exercise. In not doing things perfectly like this is literally the universe going are you sure <laughs> you're sure about that I'm like yep 100 <laughs> percent. are you gonna go in and change it immediately no and so all i did was say thanks <laughs> and moved on i didn't even look for the typos i'm like i can't even i can't even i'm not gonna you know whatever but oh, i always gosh. describe that moment i feel seen i feel seen <laughs> <laughs> I always describe that moment and what happened for the, I guess, the, you know, period straight afterwards as 
when everyone's sitting around at Christmas lunch and everyone's had an absolute gut full of food, we're all still trying to be polite. Everyone wants to just go for a nap, but everyone's still, you know, chit chatting and that sort of thing. And someone finally undoes their <laughs> button. And as soon as you notice someone does it, everyone does it. That's what it felt like when I was like, okay, this is uncomfortable. And I know this is kind of a little bit inappropriate, but I'm going to do it anyway. And everyone else just went, oh, thank oh. God, we don't have to do it. any. We don't have to be perfect either. And just ha- it was the same as what I said before. And noticing the, f- the beautiful effect that that had on everyone else was like, I could kind of trick myself into like, I'm just doing this so that it's okay for them to do it. You know, being the people pleaser. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm just doing this for them. But it tricked me into you know, doing the same sort of thing. So same with asking for and accepting help. You know, when someone says, hey, um, Jane, can you give me a hand with something? Or I really need your help. Or they call and say, can we have a chat? Or like, I just need to talk something. You're like, oh, they picked me. They could have picked anyone. And they asked me for help. You feel super chuffed, right? And when you can help someone, you get that beautiful bucket feeling for one. We read the bucket feeling book from Bedtime Story last night. That's why it's in my head. Um, <laughs> it's that beautiful feeling. And so I was, again, sort of tricked myself into thinking like, I'm just going to let people help me because it makes them feel good. Not because I need the help, because it makes them feel good. And then after so many times I said yes or accepted help or whatever, even when I was like, I don't really need it, but I'll do it for them because it makes them feel good. I'm like, wow, this makes everyone's life better. When you accept help, when you ask for help or someone offers it and you say, yes, please, like everything just kind of fits into place. So I think that's kind of probably the ethos of the community that I've, you know, tried to try to foster and try to build, whether it's my community or the ones that I'm sort of in is, is being a bit vulnerable, whether it's asking for help or saying stuff that usually feels a bit uncomfortable or asking for, you know, stuff, whatever. Like when, um, when I separated from my, my ex several years ago, I sent a message probably within a few days to a group of women who were kind of my, my um, peers, but also, you know, quite spiritual mentor wise for me, sent a message, let them know. And I was like, I don't know what I need. I don't know that I need anything. I just need to tell someone mm. this feels really gross. Thanks. Bye. Okay, <laughs> so thanks, bye. Probably, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Probably completely awkward. And they all just came back with like, cool, we're here for you when you need, we're here, like whatever. There was no judgment. There was no questions. There was no bullshit, anything like that. And just sending that message and, and knowing that there were people there who were just going to hold that space for me or um, be there if I then had a meltdown and was like, on the phone, yeah, yeah, I yeah. didn't have to explain that sort of thing. So just, and just knowing that I could say those things to people was like, oh, all right and no one died and you know everything's fine and cool it was just you know and then they started doing that to you know the others and it was just I don't know there's something around that vulnerability I think especially as as women that we are really good with our feelings and all that sort of thing but we are also sometimes feel like we're a burden or we're asking too much or we know that everyone else got loads on their plate as well so you're kind of reluctant to to ask and that sort of thing business-wise and personal but that's what makes that whole community kind of tick so yeah yeah it's amazing how so I've got a couple like they're actually my online mothers group because I'm so remote my online mothers groups have become really close community and if anyone in there except so collectively there's probably 80 people in both of them if anyone in there is having a crisis everyone's just like right yep yep down tools yep someone needs help how fantastic is it just yep. let us know what do you need and yep. you know and we've been through so much together and yep. that incredible community and that vulnerability and having that safe space where you can go I think has replaced that we probably had it in villages yeah but I found that um it's not and, and finding what makes a safe space different is you don't get judged yeah yeah exactly you don't get gossiped about yeah you don't which is what does happen in in small towns Mm -hmm. um I'm very anti-gossip I don't participate in it just saying that um but yeah I love that beautiful safe space where you you're not you're actually not going to be judged and if someone's judging me you ain't my people that's their that's their shit exactly yeah that's 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 all what you think of me is none of my business it's one of my faves yep (laughs) just because you say something doesn't make it true is what I always say to my kids (laughs) so what is your why 
what keeps you motivated in this wonderful journey of entrepreneurship as crazy yeah, as look, it is? I guess there's a few things. <laughs> Number one, I, it's really important to me that my kids see that that it's not just a linear journey. You don't have to go to school, university, get a job, get married, have babies and die. Like I just think there's so much more about, about life and that sort of thing. And so for me, it's kind of been almost a bit reverse engineered like I wanted to do this for the kids and I'm you know I'm, I'm doing this to show the kids and every time the kids are like I want to be a such and such when I grow up I'm like you could or you could start your own business and blah 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 and not work for men and you know make your own money and make your own out blah, blah, blah. like I go on that sort of ta- tangent but in doing so I've also had to force myself into actually living those truths and not just saying the words and not just being like you can do anything you want to do I'm like you know what I want to do this thing so I'm going to go and do it and I want you to see me doing it and want you to see me having good boundaries and I want you to see me having fun I want you to see me being able to pick um you know when I work and when we go away on holidays and all of that sort of thing like that's become really important to me so teaching them um a different way than than what we were probably brought up with like it's so linear you have to do this then this then this and if you miss mm. a step well I guess you're uh guess you're going down Centrelink like you know there was you're this the whole, island mate totally right and it's such a load of rubbish and I mean, it has been a journey and there's definitely been times where income's been really crap and then there's definitely been times when the income's been amazing. And I think that's kind of part of the journey as well as having to, you know, plan and, and, um, and respond and, you know, make changes and reflect and review and all of that sort of thing. So I think that's been a really big, really big part of it. For me, especially in the last couple of years since moving up here and being a single mum, the lifestyle has, you know, the lifestyle has always been, the reason but now that I'm living the lifestyle I'm like I'm not I'm not giving up this lifestyle like I I'm can, not compromising my boundaries I'm not compromising my boundaries you know up until probably two years ago I probably went on seek about every six months and was like screw this I'm gonna go get a job this is too hard it's too whatever the problem was that day um, and then I'd spend half an hour on seek and be like Oh, this is so never mind. <laughs> Forget so about depressing. it. And then I remember school, ho- I'll make it work. school holidays and I go, I can't make that work. <laughs> totally. School holidays, like the lifestyle thing, but also the money thing. And you're like, they want me to do what? For how much? Are you serious? No, never 40 mind. hours a week? Yeah, for 40 hours a week. And do I have to ask someone if I need time off? Because that's not going to happen. Like I just... <laughs> Does not play nicely with others. Exactly. So (laughs) the lifestyle thing, now that I've, you know, um, I was reading through some captain's orders and some journaling stuff from years ago and everything that I've wanted, I've got. And you're like, oh my gosh, like what's next? If that's sort of the thing, like I'm only working 15 to 20 hours a week, I'm super present for the kids. I'm about to buy a house. I'm, you know, all of the things that I want to do. I want to go to the beach every day. I want to go for a walk every day. I want to have an hour in the morning to do whatever the hell I want to do, that sort of thing. Like imagine not being able to do that anymore. And that is really motivating to me because I just, I just love my life so much, you know, now that we're sort of in this, this position that that's a really, really big motivator for me. Um, And I guess part of that is also money. You know, this year is for me is about sustainability. Last year was about growth. And I think, you know, there's always a bit of a flow with that sort of thing. Mm. Um, But definitely in order to support that and, you know, things that I want to do in the future with, investing and travel and all of that sort of thing is definitely you know I've and I've always been motivated by money to some extent although more more so these days I understand that it's not really the money it's the lifestyle that I perceive the money can get me it's what money gives you exactly exactly so yeah so I think those are kind of the the three big things or the two big things really that um yeah make it work but there's also I mean there's also days where I do just go you know what I hate everything right now and I'm not going to do anything and I'm going to sit on the couch and watch Netflix and eat chocolate and I'm not going to apologize for that and that's completely okay because tomorrow will be fine again. Uh, I'll be no, better tomorrow. All, it's not all like, yay, I'm so motivated, sunshine and lollipops. It's just not how it works, right? Um, yeah, it's not all Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all the prettiness you see on Instagram. It's funny, I, I, I got to a point where I go, you know what, if I want a nap, I'm just going to have a nap. Yeah. And ever since I said that though, no naps nap it's like my inner rebel goes I um I I live in a a townhouse complex and I even find if it's the middle of the day and I want to sit down and watch telly I shut my blinds because I like I'm like what if I think like what does she just like lay down on the couch all day Um, telly on during the day (laughs) exactly isn't she supposed to be working and part of me is like yeah yeah and it's working and part of me is still like 
I can't let anyone see that I'm not at my computer five hours a day. <laughs> That's so funny. Whereas I close the blinds in case delivery people turn up and see me like. Oh, how funny. Couch. Literally just after we started, I, I knew there was a delivery coming and I wrote a little note on the front door saying, please don't knock, I'm in a live recording. Have a nice Christmas. Please leave it on the chair. Christmas. And I saw him just tiptoe up and put it on the chair. <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless him. Thank you for reading this sign, mate. Oh, now I want to know what you ordered. Um, so <laughs> what are your top tips for all the smart women business across the world? Oh, top tips. Find your peeps. Find a person and then, you know, build on it from there. One of the, I think, the biggest things, obviously having the big community and the big groups and, and finding a posse of, of people who have always got you back and have the sort of culture and the ethos that you want, whether that's go get them or whether that's we'll get them tomorrow or whether that's go and lie on the couch and watch Netflix. Do you know what I mean? Like whatever, yeah. whatever the vibe is, you know, we all need different things. Some people need much more gung-ho, like, come on, let's go do it. And some people are like, come on. I'll walk you with you we'll hold hands still in the way whatever you need find those people but also find like the person like the biz bestie or a couple of biz besties who you can touch base with regularly you can bounce ideas off with ideally are at a similar kind of point in their business but probably a slightly different sort of business to yours partly because there's just there's just different things like that are more relevant or more pertinent at different stages of business and if you're you know meeting with someone who's way down the track that's more of a mentor rather than a biz buddy it's a totally different relationship I mm. totally think you need mentors and coaches as well but having someone who can understand a bit about your business where you're at and also call you on your bullshit and that's the biggest thing right I have my biz bestie we meet once a once a week um, we we have incredibly different businesses there's absolutely no similarities between them but we're at very similar stages of our business we can talk through things like I've got this idea and or I was thinking about this or how would you troubleshoot this and we can help each other with that but we also know each other and know each other's business well enough to go hey doesn't sound like that priority you were talking about last month are we getting a bit derailed or distracted you're right shiny object goes back in the toy box or whatever so we can kind of call each other on the practical and the mindset bs that we mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of, i can see you're hiding behind that product because yes. it feels like you're showing up and in fact you're actually not showing up exactly exactly <laughs> and i've got you know we've got a few biz besties around the place and one we um have a bit of a joke that uh, with my shiny object i'm like i have to finish this but i've got shiny object syndrome so if you see me getting distracted by shiny objects come get the spray bottle and give me a few squirts so occasionally I'll just get a message from her with a gif of someone with a spray bottle because she can see that I've gone into a group and I'm like, hey, I was just having a think about it. She's like, shh, 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 stop, back to the thing you're supposed to be doing. Sorry, yes, thank you. So that's yes. really important to me, like just having those people who I trust um, have got my back um, and know what they're talking about can give great advice but also keep me on the straight and narrow and be my cheerleaders and all of that sort of thing. I think the, you know, the people side of things is what makes or breaks, unfortunately. Not unfortunately, fortunately, but unfortunately, it can be a really quick fix that people don't lean on. Sort of mm. thing. So I think that you know, getting getting your your circle right is really really important. Um, secondly, I think having some of those routines and rituals and structures in your business are not negotiable. I always talk about freedom and structure when you're sort of rolling around and you know, there's no um, substance or there's no structure at all. It Sometimes it works, especially with people with super creative businesses and that sort of thing. That's fantastic. And if it's working, go nuts. But often people don't have any structure and then they get this amazing inspiration or motivation or creative burst or whatever, but there's no conduit to get it to where it needs to be to make it what it what you want it to be sort of thing. Whether Actually that's make it sell. Product or, yeah, mm. exactly. Um, or, you know, you've got... I want to write this blog or I want to do this video and then you do it, but then you're not sure how to actually distribute it or publish it and that sort of thing. So it just sits there. Like it's kind of having some sort of structures and that sort of thing actually make it easier for things to be brought to life when you do get that, whatever it is. Mm. So I think that's really important. Um, and what else? Yeah, I think the rituals, the rituals is really big. So having the beginning of the day, beginning of the month, end of the day, whatever it is, those sort of things that are um uh, constant and um, ex um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you're expecting them. You know what's going on. Predictable. Predictable. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like expectable. It's not quite a word. 
But yes, exactly what yeah. you were saying. Um, predictable because it just it like there's so many other things that do fluctuate and do change and do require you to be very agile and flexible. Mm. That if there's a few things that are those kind of I can depend on these, these happen all the time, I can always go back to that, it just makes it a lot less. Um, turbulent sort of thing or you know balances and out is it like your amygdala down? goes safety comfort safety comfort I think so yeah I think so yeah yep I know what to expect I know what's coming next um, and probably the last thing is rewards and celebrations and stopping to reflect like, don't I didn't do that, do that enough. For the first I was like I've got a to-do list done what's next done what's next done what's next and then it wasn't until you know years down the track you're like shit got a lot of stuff done I, I, that that a lot of great stuff. Achievement. <laughs> yeah um you know and then people talk about well how are you going to reward yourself when you sell out your retreat and I was like going the on retreat? the retreat I don't know <laughs> um and you know and I guess it, you sort of learn these things by osmosis and then there was this beautiful um Marla necklace that I was coveting but it was quite expensive and I was like oh no I was like, right, if I sell out my retreat, I'll buy that. And I sold it out and I bought it. And I wore that thing almost every single day with such pride. Yeah. This was and my, just, secured oh, my first 5K, five-figure contract Marla necklace. Yes. Yeah. That was a few it's years ago. It's thing. It's I so love cool. It. Yeah, yeah. It's so, and it is such a like beautiful anchor that you can wear and you're like, I remember. I, I did this thing. I blah, 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 whatever it is. And whether it's that, whether it's just taking a moment to message your biz bestie, you know, guess what I just did? Having that moment to stop. And uh, the very first course that I ever put together was called Pause for Effect. And it was about pausing to review and reflect at the end of the year before you start planning for a new year, because there's no point planning the future if you don't know what happened in the past, right? There's no point. Yeah. And there's often times where we plan stuff and we just plan to do the same shit again. And it actually didn't work the first time. Like, why would why are we doing that thing again that we need to maybe make some changes so I did this whole thing so it's a big I think it's a really big thing to actually take the moment to yeah reflect and reward yourself and um and celebrate the wins however whatever that looks like little and big even if it's just like yeah I did that get up and go for a walk go and check your letterbox and get some fresh air I don't know whatever your reward is go make another cup of coffee that's normally that's my all right I finished my calls for the day I'm gonna walk to my mailbox <laughs> which is quite a hike yeah, I think. <laughs> Yeah, woo, amazing. But yeah, having when like, we're in lockdown, you know, like, dude, I'm like, going <laughs> to my mailbox is a good kind of. This is an outing. I might put on my ball gown for it too. <laughs> I won that ring doing my vacuuming in my ball gown, but that's another story. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. Oh, lockdown yeah. I think comes. I think that's a really big thing. It's one that a lot of us miss, and we we even even like I I do a fair bit of it, and I still think I could probably do more of it. Yeah. I could definitely do more of it. Now I'm like, I was going, I've just about to finish some projects looking ahead to next year. Oh, we need some celebration time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Claire. How can people find out, connect with you? Speaking of magnetic women, yeah. find out more about you and your work. Um, website is just clairereilly.co or Facebook Claire Riley coaching you can find me there they're probably the best places there's always loads of content surprise surprise um I've got <laughs> a podcast as crazy. well yeah the podcast is the recovering perfectionist um, which is on all the usual podcasty places so that's a good place to start if you want to hang out there amazing Yay. thank you Claire for your time today thank and your insights me. thank you thanks for having me it was great to chat yeah awesome thanks Claire great